Now in business, there is a term called the iron triangle, and this refers to the belief that a product can be good, fast, or cheap, but never all three. And the more thought I put into it, the more I realized this could be applied to side hustles as well. For instance, you could have lucrative, fast, and easy, but never all three. What's up everybody, my name is Corey at Mission Side Hustle and I am on a mission to turn $500 into $1 million. And on this channel, I've been vlogging the entire journey. If you're like me, you've probably watched hundreds of side hustle videos on YouTube before and you're now convinced that your affiliate marketing, ebook, and Forex day trading account are all about to pop off any second now. Eh. There's a lot of get rich quick content on YouTube and part of the problem is that creators are incentivized to make these types of videos because frankly, it's what you guys click on. You know, it's a lot like junk food where in the moment it tastes really great to consume it, but at the end of the day, you're left feeling empty and no better off than when you started. So today I wanna to give it to you straight like a plate full of side hustle broccoli. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you my favorite side hustles that I've done so far on this channel, what you can roughly expect to make with them, and also how they build on each other so you can get to what I feel is the best side hustle slash investment you can make. And at the end, I've also snuck in my personal favorite too. So let's dive right in and get to it. Number one, chopping firewood as our forefathers intended. Just kidding, but I did get all this firewood through a side hustle that I've tried on this channel, and that's junk removal. Junk removal can be pretty lucrative, and the money can come pretty fast. But boy oh boy, it is not easy, and you better plan on getting dirtier than when you open your first Shopify store in your mama's basement. Let's have a laugh at your expense, shall we? Remember, they're just jokes. The barrier of entry is extremely low for junk removal, and that's nice for those people getting started from scratch. All you really need is a vehicle, and I've actually seen people rent U-Hauls just to finish jobs without having to have the proper equipment themselves. Now to be fair, this low barrier of entry is a double-edged sword. There's often a lot of new and established competition, making this a highly competitive industry. But if you're able to deliver and execute on what you say, you stand to make a lot of money. Back when I was doing junk removal, I was filling a six by 12 trailer for $450. My profit on that trailer was generally 350 to 400, depending on how far away the customer was and how much the items weighed. So I'd say it's pretty reasonable to expect. You can probably make like $1,000 extra a month if you're just working part-time on the weekends. But if you go hard with it, really, the sky's the limit. This is a scale opportunity although most junkerville companies that i have seen are owner operated there are many savvy entrepreneurs out there that have multiple trucks multiple crew members and over time have removed themselves from the day-to-day -day operations and have a full functioning business so on the side hustle triangle that i mentioned earlier i would give this one lucrative and fast but it's definitely not easy now our next side hustle is one that can actually be used in conjunction with junk removal if you so wish and that's flipping. Personally for me, my favorite thing to flip has always been furniture and other various types of home goods. I like to go to auctions and buy lots and lots of items in bulk, bring them back to my storage unit and sell them that way. You could go to garage sales and find items to flip, or you could just simply look around your house and find things that you're not using anymore and sell those. Come on, man, you gotta let it go. Nobody plays Halo 2 anymore, it's time. Within flipping, there are lots of niches that you can specialize in, and if you can somehow master one of them, you can certainly make a lot of money. Now, in some of my best months of flipping, I've made three, four, five thousand dollars even, and the amount of work just depending on what kind of items I bought. And if you plan on doing junk removal, don't forget what you might think you have to throw away might be an item worth selling. Now, personally, if I was gonna start over and do furniture flipping, starting with nothing besides a little bit of cash to get started with, I would take these simple steps. Also for context, let's pretend I only have like a 49cc scooter and I live in my mom's basement with my failed Shopify store. Remember, they're just jokes. First, I would save a fair amount of money. Let's say $1,000. Then I'd find an auction and target all the items I wanted to buy. For me, it'd probably be furniture. Once I bought those items, I'd find the cheapest and most affordable storage unit nearby that could fit the items that I purchased. Then I'd rent a box truck or a pickup truck, again, depending on how much I bought, and bring it all back to that storage unit. Then I'd post it all on Facebook Marketplace and make the sales right out of my unit. That way, I don't even need a car. But I'd still offer delivery. I just have to make sure that delivery cost exceeds the amount of the truck rental and my time, and I would really only do it if it was gonna make or break the deal. Otherwise, all sales come right out of the storage unit. And if you continue to reinvest your profits over and over again into more flipping inventory, you'd be making a pretty significant income pretty soon. On our side hustle triangle, I'd give this one the rating of lucrative and easy. Mainly because this isn't very fast. You often have to wait for the right buyer to come along, especially if you're selling an item for top dollar. The formula to be successful at this is simple, but the work itself can be time consuming and it can be difficult. Now this next one is gonna catch me some heat, but at least please just hear me out first. And that's cause this one is getting a part-time job or doing gig work. Just 
Just listen. I've tried gig work and even did Uber Eats on this channel, and it wasn't so bad. Because the harsh reality about actually pursuing entrepreneurship is that it's really hard and extremely risky. As an entrepreneur, your success rests entirely on your own shoulders. And that also means that things go wrong that are entirely out of your control. And when that happens, the result could be you wasting a ton of time and a lot of money. But instead, if you were to work a part-time job, your risk is significantly reduced. It may come with the cost of your earning potential and time flexibility, but it does offer you stability. And like I said before, when I first started this channel, I began doing Uber Eats food delivery on a scooter. I would only work the prime hours that I selected in order to maximize my earnings, and I'd often make $25 to $30 an hour. As a culture, we've began to look down on people for taking this route. And don't get me wrong, I wouldn't want to stay in this position forever, but I do think it can be a really good stepping stone for a lot of people. Maybe it's just saving your first thousand dollars to start flipping furniture. And personally, this isn't the route for me, but it's not to say it couldn't be the route for someone else. On the side hustle triangle, I'd give this one a rating of easy and fast, but not always lucrative. The formula for gig work and getting a part-time job is extremely easy. And in this labor market, part-time jobs are pretty plentiful. But again, just know what you're signing up for. You'll likely be putting in a lot more hours for a lot less money, but with the guarantee that you'll actually make some, which is not always the case when you go your own way. Now this next side hustle I've been saving toward the end of the video, because up until this point, we've been working smaller and smaller side hustles to build up to this position here. Because in order to do this one, you'll have to have some level of say average financial success at this point which is why we discussed three tangible ways to get started before this. And that's house hacking and turning it into an Airbnb, which is what I'm doing right here. House hacking is when you buy a primary residence to rent out part of that property, either in it or on it. This could be as simple as getting a single family home and then getting roommates, or it could be a bit more advanced when you buy, say, a multifamily like a duplex, triplex, or quadruplex and rent out those other units. Or perhaps it could be a combination of both where you buy a multifamily and get roommates in your unit because that would be next level. But even still, you could take it a step further and rent these same spaces on Airbnb. This will be more financially lucrative, but will take a lot more investment up front for furnishings, as well as effort for upkeep and guest management. Either way, in my opinion, this is the best bang for your buck side hustle slash investment you can make. To get started, you'll need some down payment money, which is where those first side hustles come into play. There are a lot of loan options you can go with to make this happen. I would definitely consult with a professional, but generally speaking, a lot of people like to do the FHA loan or a VA loan for the low down payments. FHA is 3.5% and VA, if you're a veteran, is no money down. Now with this side hustle, I think the best pros are the cash flow, potential property appreciation, tax benefits, and the fact you got a roof over your head. No more mommy's basement. They're just jokes. It should be said though, this is not without risk. Tenants can be tough, things can break, and the market could always take a downturn. But if you take on this side hustle and investment with a long-term vision in mind, chances are you'll do quite well. To give an actual example, I'll talk about a duplex that my wife and I own. We bought this property four years ago for $250,000. We lived in one side as a primary residence and rented out the other side on Airbnb. Our total monthly cost of this property, and that includes everything, the mortgage, interest, taxes, and utilities was about 1,700. And with the rentals on the other side, we gross about 2,500. So technically we lived there for free and we're making an extra $800 in cash flow every month. In addition to, and this might be the most important part, paying down the note and gaining equity. And now that both sides are rented, it makes about two to $5,000 in monthly cash flow, depending on the season. Now listen, it'd be irresponsible not to say the real estate market has been extremely hot and a lot of that appreciation has come from the last two years, but even if you get a moderate appreciation, it often is still worth it. I've gone into a lot more detail in some other videos before, so I'll put a card up to link you guys over there if you're interested, if you'd like a bit more context on this one. And when it comes to the side hustle triangle, I would only give this one the rating of lucrative. And I only say it's lucrative because it's extremely lucrative and it's definitely not fast and it's definitely not easy. Making these kind of investments and putting in all this work is not an overnight success. It takes a lot of work to find the right property, secure the loan, and actually get to the closing table. And that's not even mentioning the actual rental operations. But the reality is, if you can figure this out, it's likely one of the best financial decisions you can make for yourself. Now I've saved this last one here because it's truly my favorite but it's not my favorite because I think it's the best. It's simply my favorite because it's what I enjoy doing most. Now, to be honest, I kind of hate that I'm even putting this on the list because when I watch these kind of videos and people mention it, I really find it to be corny a lot of the time. You corny, dog. You corny, you a lame. Why are you so mad? But I have a good reason. And this side hustle is becoming a social media influencer. Oh my God, I can't believe I said that. But it is true, and yeah, 
you can make a lot of money doing it. But here's my reason why. There's a community and niche for everyone and everything out there. And what that means personally for me is I get to interact and connect with people that have the same passions that I do. I even have the chance to become friends with other YouTubers and experts in their field. It makes me really happy. And in turn, being happy makes me more effective in all aspects of my life. And being more effective and being happy kind of just perpetuates the cycle of growth and motivation. So my friends, my advice with this one is simple. If you ever wanted to do a YouTube channel or anything like this, don't start with the money in mind. If that happens as a consequence, good. Instead, you should consider your longevity and your passion first. Otherwise, you won't have the motivation to keep going. All the work I put into this channel honestly eclipses a lot of the other things that I do in my life professionally. And sometimes that payoff is there and other times it doesn't go as planned. And for this one, I, I can't really give a side hustle rating because it's really different for everybody. For some people, it's extremely fast and lucrative. Other people might take a long time, but don't have to put as much work into it. So everybody's experience is gonna be a little bit different. But that said, I truly love doing it. And if you've ever considered doing it yourself, you should give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. Now, if you guys have any questions about these side hustles that we discussed, make sure you guys leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, something new I have started doing is offering one hour booking calls if you wanna discuss anything side hustle related or entrepreneurship related. I'll put that link in the description below. If you got any value out of this video or you liked it, please make sure you hit that like button. It helps quite a bit. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you wanna hear more about the triplex on house hacking right now, why don't you check out this video over here? As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see y'all next week.